Hello everyone, welcome to another anatomy video. Hope you're all having a great day. And today we'll be covering the landmarks found on the thoracic cage. This is the last part of the axial osteology unit. And then we can go ahead and move on to other chapters. Now the first thing I want to go over are the different parts of the thoracic cage. The thoracic cage is made up of 12 pairs of ribs. In addition to the 12 pairs of ribs, we also have a sternum, as well as the thoracic vertebrae. And all these different parts make up the thoracic cage. The first part of the thoracic cage that I want to discuss are the ribs. Now the first seven pairs of ribs, starting from superior to inferior, are called true ribs. And the reason why they're called true ribs is because they have what's called costal cartilage that unites with the sternum directly. As you can see here, this grayish blue, this is the costal cartilage that I was referring to. And you notice that the first seven pairs, they have costal cartilage that unite directly to the sternum. So the first seven pairs are true ribs. The last five pairs are called false ribs. And they're called that because their costal cartilage does not unite with the sternum, as shown with this green. They unite with other costal cartilages. They don't unite directly to the sternum itself. Within the false ribs, there's another subunit of ribs, and they're called floating ribs. If we look at the last two pair of ribs in this image, we can see this rib and this rib, as well as their pair on the contralateral side, their costal cartilage doesn't even connect to other fellowing costal cartilages that are found superior to them. Because of this, they seem to be floating, and that's why we have two pairs of floating ribs. The next structure that we need to discuss is what's called the costal arch. The costal arch is made up of the costal cartilages from ribs 7 through 10. And we get this nice palpable structure, again called the costal arch. Now we know all the structures of the thoracic cage, we can go ahead and learn the individual landmarks found on the ribs and then on the sternum. Starting with the ribs, right here we have a typical rib. And on a rib, we have three different regions. The first one being right here called the head of a rib. We have this narrowing just distal to the head of the rib, which is called the neck. And then we have this long portion right here, which is going to be called the body of the rib. Right in between where the neck of the rib is located and where the body of the rib begins, we have this small little bump. This little bump is called the tubercle of a rib. And in the last video, we learned about costal fovea of a transverse process of a thoracic vertebra. Well, those costal fovea actually articulate with the tubercle of a rib. So that is the landmark that articulates with the costal fovea of a transverse process of a thoracic vertebra. The next landmark we need to learn is this small indentation found on the inferior portion within the inner side of the rib. This small indentation is called a groove of a rib.
the last landmark that we need to learn that's located on a rib is where the body of the rib has the tightest turn, which is located right here. Where the body of the rib turns really sharply, this right here is called angle of a rib. Now it might be difficult to see from this perspective, so let's go ahead and look at this image. You can see this really nice tight turn found right here on the rib, and again that's going to be called the angle of the rib. And we can quickly review all the other landmarks. Here's the head. Right here we have the neck, the narrowing just after the head. We have this small bump, which is called the tubercle of a rib. We have this whole thing, which is called the body of a rib. And we can't see it from this view, but the subtle indentation on the inferior border of the rib is called the groove of a rib. And those are all the landmarks that we need to know for ribs. Now we can go ahead and move on to the sternum. Like the rib, the sternum is divided into three different parts. The most superior portion, indicated right here, this is going to be called the manubrium of the sternum. Just distal, we have the body of the sternum. And the most inferior portion of the sternum is called the xiphoid process. Returning back to the manubrium of the sternum, we have this subtle notch found on the superior part of it. This subtle notch is called the jugular notch of the sternum. Just lateral on both sides of the jugular notch, we have another notch. These notches right here are called clavicular notches. And you can imagine why it's called the clavicular notch, because the sternal extremity of a clavicle articulates with the clavicular notch of the sternum. It's all tying together now. The next set of landmarks that we need to learn, starting from the maneuvering of the sternum and working our way down inferior towards the xiphoid process of the sternum, we have these notches. These notches work all the way down towards the bottom part of the body of the sternum. Each one of these notches that receives the costal cartilage of a true rib is called costal notch of the sternum. The very last landmark that we need to discuss that's found on the sternum is located right between the junction of the manubrium of the sternum and the body of the sternum, right here where this line is. This right here is called the angle of the sternum. Now you may be thinking, why is it called the angle? It looks pretty flat. When we think of angle, we either think of something bending or the corner of something. Well, if we look at it from a lateral view, we can see that the maneuvering of the sternum and the body of the sternum are going in two different planes of direction. If we look closely at the maneuvering of the sternum, we can see that the plane of the maneuvering of the sternum goes in this direction compared to the plane of the body of the sternum moving up in this direction. And that is why this point right here, where they meet, is called the angle of the sternum. And that's it. We have completed all the landmarks that you need to know for the axial osteology. It took quite a few videos to go over each one, but as you guys study and go over the videos, go to open lab and quiz one another, this material should become pretty easy to you. I hope you guys all do well on your exams, and I'll see you guys next time.